Hi everyone. One of the most common queries I get asked when we're talking about getting a project started on Gorilla is how you can create different versions of an experiment, um, such as different groups, to place your participants in, and randomize your participants into different groups. So if you use basic survey software, you may be used to creating, say, three different links, and sending out those links uh, independent of these different people to try and get them to complete different versions. Um, but one, this isn't a very effective way of randomizing people unless you're doing some kind of uh, random number generator before you start. If you're sending it to random people, um, you might not get that true randomization. So one of the handy things about Gorilla, so although you could create, say, three different versions of an experiment, but it's not very efficient. So within Gorilla, there's actually some um, components to allow you to randomize people into different groups. So there's a couple of things that you're going to need. So this is an example project. So it's your basic layout where we've got our participant information sheet, a consent form, a debrief, and then we need some tasks or questionnaires, um, at different versions of them to create depending on what conditions people need randomizing into. So here it's just a brief example that we've used in a student project where Participants are entered into one of three different music conditions. So we've got a disco word list, a pop word list, and a rock word list. And the idea is that our participants can be randomized into one of those and they listen to um, either disco, pop, or rock music as they listen to, um, as they memorize some words. And then they get entered into a quiz, and the idea is that we're interested in comparing whether people can remember words better depending on the music back, back, background uh, to that. So there's two options here. We can either have different questionnaire elements to randomise people into, or we can have different task elements to randomise people into. So depending which one you choose is depending what element you actually want randomising. But the important thing is, is you want three or four or however many different groups you want people being placed into and you create the variations within your tasks and questionnaires. So assuming that you have that, we will go into how you would actually perform a randomizing. So I've created an example experiment here. So if we wanted to create um, a new experiment, we can go create and give it a name and it will look like this. So when you create an experiment, Gorilla gives you a starting point by um, giving you a start and finish node. And to before we make any changes, we're going to have to edit. So if we make this a little longer to give us a bit of space to put our components into. So we're assuming here that we've got not got any starting point yet. So we need to add a few components in. So for example, our participant information sheet. We want people to can enter this first. So to create to join the nodes up, we go from start to participant information sheet. Add another questionnaire, and then we want our consent form. So we want from the information sheet to the consent form, and then at this point. This is when we want to randomize our participant into those conditions. So within Gorilla, we've actually got a component or a node called randomizer. So this can tend, send your participants down different paths. So there can be any number of these paths and we can have different options for randomizing people into them. So if we click OK, and it will give us this option and we've got our group and ratio. So there are two different ways you can randomize your participants. It can either be balanced, meaning that if we want to collect 30 participants and we want 10 participants in each group, we're essentially setting banks of numbers. So we could say, if we'd start off with rock and we have 10 participants, pop with 10 participants, and disco with 10 participants. What this is doing is it will create three different branches with 10 spaces in each branch. And when the participants get entered into 
into the randomizer branch, it will randomly allocate them to one of those bins. And when you allocate them into one, it will reduce the number. So say the first participant goes into rock, there would be nine spaces left. Another one gets added with the eight spaces and so on until there's zero spaces left across your experiment. If you want it truly random, which means that you could have just an equal probability to being dropped into one of those three groups, you could change it from balanced to random. But if we want an equal number in each group, then it's better to choose the balance option and then we can have a set number of people in each of those groups. So again, if you wanted four groups, you just add another one in, give it a different name, and tell Gorilla how many participants you would want in that group. So if we save this, we then get this slightly different colored node. So we want the participants going from the consent form to the randomizer. And then you'll see that there are three different nodes now. So we'll have to do some experimenting. So the order of these will depend on the order in which you just highlighted them. So now we need our three different versions. So if we start with rock, we want these down here. Move on to disco. And finally, if we enter the pop list, so again, we can just make a little bit of room here. So now we can allocate these into the different ones. So we drag the first one, which we allocated was rock. So we've got one node coming from randomizer to the rock word list. And when we was naming those um, three different branches, rock was the first one, then it was pop was the second one, and disco was the third one. So we did do that in the right order. So now we have three different options. When people get funneled down in the experiment, it goes from start to the information sheet, to the consent form, to the randomizer, and then our participants get allocated into one of our three conditions. So once we have that, we need to add the task. So in our, our three different nodes, the participants complete, um, memorize a word list while they listen to different types of music and then we want to test them on it. So if we create again a little bit more room here. So we want, after they've been in one of our three conditions, we want them being funnel into quiz. So all three of the nodes want to join into the quiz. And then at the end of the experiment, to comply with the ethical guidelines, we want people to be debriefed. So we can have a debrief sheet to finish off at the end. So if we go from the quiz to the debrief and the debrief to the finish, we've now got the full experiment framework where we can go all the way through the experiment and Everything will be the same for our participants other than they are randomized into one of our free music conditions. So hopefully this will explain how you can use Gorilla to random, add an element of randomization into your experiments, place people into different groups. And if you wanted to make this more complicated where you had, say, two elements of randomizing, you could create one randomizer into two different branches and then under those you could have an additional level of randomization. So you can have a play around with that, see if there's anything that's going to be a little bit more useful to your needs. But this is just a basic overview of how you can use the randomizer node to help place people into different groups.